is the first time you've had to play without Ty this season. How much did his absence contribute to the offensive execution or lack thereof? Yeah, um, I, I think we had a hard time finding the balance of um, running our stuff hard, trusting, trusting the offense to produce a quality shot that we could get um, to being where we got to force the action. And uh, I think, you know, that there's a there's a balance. You got to still stay assertive. Um, but we were we were unsound um, in the last two games, second half. And of course, Ty helps us with that. And um, and his absence certainly showed. But uh, it was an invaluable experience for all of our guys to play in that. I think we made some defensive plays to block some shots and bother some things. And they missed an awful lot of open, wide open looks. Let's keep let's keep it real on that stuff. We were fortunate in that regard. Um, but there was enough good plays defensively, and um, we um, we certainly at times were fumbling around and struggling. Um, and I just there's a quote uh, we said, "Excellence isn't easy. Stay focused." And at times we sort of we wavered in and out of that, and that that was uh, apparent. Yeah, how does it uh, how do things look for for Ty going forward with? His yeah, well, he couldn't play today. Obviously, he would have played. He couldn't play today. So hopefully, you know. Um, He'll keep. He, he improved in the NC State game. He, he hurt his back early in the game, tweaked it, and um, he just wasn't able to to play today. So, um, you know, that's really all I know. And I'm hoping, you know, I think it's going in the right direction, and we'll see. Chris, thank you. Coach, you were ball screen heavy a lot today. Tried yes. some of your other stuff, but it looked like guys were indecisive. Yep. Kind of hesitant with some of their decisions. What do you think was causing some of that? Yeah. Or was it something Miami was um, doing? So, some, certainly some of Miami's, you know, they have two guys that can really pressure the ball um, that, you know, and likes and um, the number five is Zach Johnson. Um, good golfer, too. I'm <laughs> talking golf. Uh, but um, he, um, and so they, they were jumping some passing lanes, and then at times our, our bigs handle it in that. And I just felt like early on we got some good looks out of our ball screen offense, and we just missed a lot of shots. Um, and that seemed like gave us the best chance to have an opportunity to get some scores. We were struggling in some of our other stuff, so we just tried to ride that a little more and, um, you know, and be as good as we can defensively. But that, that showed at times the indecisiveness that led to some turnovers and, you know, um, either forced shots or uh, not making the right plays. But again, there was enough good plays, and that's, that's part of learning. Tony, how would you assess Kihei's? Uh, play and, and filling in for Ty. Yeah, six make, assists, but six turnovers. Yeah, made too. some good plays at times. Um, and at times, he certainly looked like a, a first year uh, in that setting. That showed. Um, and, you know, like I said, but he did do some good things. He had to play a lot of minutes. We had to ride those guys hard. And um, guarding Chris Likes, he's quick. <laughs> you could see that. And he'll he'll go. And we've certainly been grinding for, for quite a while here. So now we'll have a little um, a bye. And we'll hopefully prepare well and improve and use the rest. But Regarding Kihei, I think there was stretches of good ball, but he also um, looked like a freshman, and um, you know he hasn't shown that quite so much. So he'll he'll grow from it. You guys had a, a pretty significant rebounding advantage against Miami, and they only had five offensive rebounds. Was that part of the game plan for today to limit their ability to get extra shots? What what do you attribute that to? Yeah, well, the offensive rebounds. You know, we were missing a lot of shots percentage wise. And I thought those were such important plays when we kept balls alive and got second chance possessions or points. I, that's significant. So, um, you know, to see who had five, Mamadi had five offensive rebounds, that stuff was terrific. And we need it in a game like this where it's kind of back and forth and you're struggling in areas, it sometimes always points to, you know, are you taking care of the ball or is it hustle plays or offensive rebounds? So that was an area that was, I think, significant. And then some of our deflections were significant. Mike, then David. Tony, it's been a long time since Ty hasn't played. How did he handle today? We saw him talking to Kihei a few times after plays and timeouts. What, what kind of a yeah, – My eyes weren't on Ty. I was not watching, <laughs> evaluating Ty's performance today. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm glad you were, though. That's good. No, I, I told him, did tell him before the game, hey, you know, talk to these guys. One time I came to the huddle and he, he had something on the whiteboard, and I was going to say, not that far. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But actually, I trust him that way. Um, so, you know, of course, he had to – said, you got to use your eyes. We'll use your eyes today and, and lead in ways that you can. Tony, Mamadi has, a, I believe, 11 block shots mm -hmm. in the last three games combined. Is he just, is he getting better defensively? Or is it just opportunity well, there? Well, 
couple things today. I think there was quite a few breakdowns, so guys were at the rim, so he had more opportunities to go up and swat him. But I think his timing's getting better, and he's so quick off the floor. You just that's unmistakable. And uh, I liked I, I liked a lot of those the offensive rebounds and the block shots. Those are the winning plays. Those are the important plays that in games like this can save you. And um, I thought there was just enough of those. But yeah, he's I think he's even improving. He looks like his timing and just his reading of it is has gotten better. And that's I didn't realize there was that many at the time. Uh, Tony, you've brought up Muggsy Bogues when talking about Kia a lot this year, and Chris likes as someone who's also sort of drawing those comparisons. What did you like about Chris? Muggsy would be mad at me today. <laughs> so no, what did, say the yeah, last part? Well, I know you recruited uh, Chris a little bit. And yeah. What did you like about him and when, when you were recruited? Just heart. I mean, when you're you know a, a smaller point guard, um, just scrappy. He's a gifted offensive player. I mean, he just he can glide, he can go, and he he's more of a scoring point guard who's hard to handle, and he can heat up the ball defensively. Um, but I just you know watching him, and he was just a dynamic scorer and has done a lot of stuff and puts a lot of pressure um, on your defense. And, you know, again, obviously he's averaging, I think he's 17, so he got that. He, he makes you aware of him, but um, big heart. And um, it's really impressive what he's accomplished being, you know, in this game. And that's, I always look at guys like that. And, and I think he has the same different games, but that same desire and that same grit. And um, again, he'll learn from that today, not playing up to his standards. Uh, Tony, up 30 turnovers for you guys in the last two games. What would you say the fix is for that, particularly given Duke is on the horizon? Yeah, um, we, just, we talked about soundness. We worked really hard in practice, um, doing sureness drills, certain things. And um, it, uh, it look at, I mean, uh, Kihei, you said had six, and then it was pretty evenly distributed. Uh, you just keep working at it. And again, there's a level of soundness without being passive. Um, and you still got to make plays when people pressure you. but. Those are areas I think we were leading the country. Someone told me before, I don't think we're leading the country anymore unless, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, that's a good way to catch us. <laughs> we don't like that spot, so we, no. Um, but you just work at it. And again, hopefully, you know, we were down a, a, a guard, and our guard, we don't have a ton of depth in the guard core, so it required um, us to play a little, a little bigger today than uh, we have been most of the year. Yeah. Yes, he did. I, you know, I, so I complimented him after the game in the locker room. I said, you know, you had a couple of hard possessions offensively, but you didn't let that affect the rest of your game. And that's a mature player. When when guys either miss shots or make mistakes, and then the rest of their game goes to goes south, um, you um, you can tell um, that you know that's that's an experience. So you make a turnover. So you miss shots. That's going to happen. Can you affect the game? That's that's a quality that I think mature players must have and have to grow into. And that's um, that's still there's room for growth in some of our guys in that way. But I like that he did that because his hands and deflections and playing. Um, and then you know he had that nice high low pass for a dunk to Mamani. And then you know I think against the press when just we needed that he threw the pass. I don't know if it was again to Mamani or Jack, but. Mommy again. Um, so those were good plays. Yeah, I thought around from you know a couple of the offensive plays, he did some good stuff.